بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا بفضلك علما وتعليما إنك على كل شيء قدير So continue with the last section on halal food Just a general idea on fringe opinions أقوال أقوال شاذة Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever wants the wide expanse of paradise, let him stick to the group. Right, And so again, the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he's speaking to his Sahaba. The Sahaba, they looked at fiqh in different ways. Some people said this, some people said that. The Tabi'een, they looked at the difference of agreement with the Sahaba, and some went one way, some went other another way. And some abandoned certain fatawa of certain Sahaba. So the Sahaba made mistakes. And the same thing, Tabi'een. The next generation, generation, they either went to A and B and they abandoned C. And so after 1,400 years of research and questioning and, a, and thinking, when you see Fatawa, an answer that one or two people gave, it's interesting, right? You want to study it from this point of view. It's an ac- academically interesting, but that's all it is. It's just academically interesting, historically interesting. But it's not something that we should apply in our lives. We should stick to the group. What have Muslims done from the majority is that of Islamic history? What have they done? Like historically speaking, go 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, just go level, level. What would you find? How does fatwa work? Follow that same way. You're going to find, historically speaking, majority of his, of Muslim scholars, vast, vast majority of Muslim scholars, you're going to find they are following a madhab. They follow a madhab. That madhab, it means answers, means principles, means uh, uh, interpretive uh, tool, tool set, the qawai rasuliyya. And they're going to apply that. And they're not necessarily always going to agree with their madhab, but by default they will agree because they're following the same system. And they're answerable to something. They're answerable to a system. There's a whole system behind you, you have to answer to it. You can't just do whatever you want. And so today in the 21st, in the 20th and 21st century, we see a lot of fold, a lot of chaos, where people give a fatwa, that fatwa does not reflect anything. It's just like totally out there. Doesn't reflect, you know, it, uh, it doesn't reflect, either it doesn't reflect the majority, and it, or, and it reflects a vast minority of the tradition, or it doesn't reflect anything, it's just crazy. And the layman is lost because I'm just trying to follow the deen, I just want to follow Allah and his messenger, and so I don't know what's, what reflects the tradition or not. But So the question you should be asking is, when I'm trying to find out is it halal or haram, the question you're going to ask is, which madhab has allowed this? Which system of fiqh has allowed this? You say, I just follow Quran and Sunnah. That's fantastic. But which system do you use to understand the Quran and Sunnah? No, I just to follow the Quran and Sunnah. Yes, I'll ask the question again. Which system do you use to understand the Quran and Sunnah? No, no, brother, I just follow Quran and Sunnah. I.e., what you're, what you're telling me is you have no system. That's what it means. You have no system. And so when you follow a system, you are following one of these former dhahib, you are sticking to the group, sticking to this majority of Muslims of Islamic history. This is like what you look like. You look like Muslims of the past, as opposed to you look like something different, totally different. And when somebody gives a fatwa in a madhab, there's a counter, there's there's uh, accountability. As I mentioned, here's a Hanbali gives a fatwa, and someone says, "Is this the Hanbali school?" Like, no, right? It's not. So, oh, okay. There's accountability, as opposed to, "Oh, brother, I just follow Quran and Sunnah." There's no accountability. Because there is no system that you have to answer to. And there's no precedent that you have to answer to. And you get chaos, you get fold up. Ibrahim uh, ibn Abi Abla, one of the Salaf, he said, Whoever spreads random opinions carries with him immense evil. So the fatwa exists. This sheikh said that. This sahabi said this. This tabi'i said this. It exists. But nobody applies it. So don't spread it. Like, this doesn't reflect tradition, so don't spread it. Uh, Al-Awza'i, 
the, one of the great Mujtahid Imams, he said, whoever follows the rare opinions of ulama leaves Islam. So like, brother, I thought, you know, there's a fatwa for this. Yeah, but it's a random opinion. And you follow this random opinion plus that random opinion, this, and say, like, where's your deen? The, the, this, the deen disappears. So if we say, I don't care about the former dhahib, the former dhahib are Islam. There's no halal and haram outside of the, outside of the former dhahib. It doesn't exist. And so you're like, oh, just like random opinions. So then you just, your life does not reflect how the 99% of Muslims have ever looked at the Quran and Sunnah, ever. And so we have to ask that question. When you say, is it halal? I'm saying, is it halal in this madhab or in that madhab? Give me a system to analyze the Quran and Sunnah in and can come to the conclusion that it's halal to eat. Very important. And so, again, as I mentioned in almost every single recording, you and I are not the first person to ask this question. Is it halal or is it haram? Do you have to say basmala? Do you not have to say basmala? Is it this this stuff has been discussed for a long time? It's all there. The books are all there. Or the principles are all there. The answers are all there. There's been sifting and debate for a long time. If a if an issue came up like the position of Qadi Abu Bakr Arabi, the Malikis will go, go with it, go against it. Simple as that. There's a, that somebody brings up an issue and they're like, well, yes or no, and they, and they, they either accept it or they don't accept it based on their system. right? And so we need to look at answers that have been around for a long time, not fringe opinions. Fringe opinions may be correct. It is theoretically possible that they're correct. But practically speaking, your obligation and my obligation is to come to Allah with something that l seems more likely. The fact that thousands and thousands of scholars have said one thing and a few people said something else, like, and usually you're not, that's not it's not a reasonable way of living life. That's not a reasonable way of applying the deen. And the Prophet Sallallahu as he said, oh, they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, uh, people bring us meat and we can't figure out whether or not th uh, they mentioned Allah's name on it. And so, and the Prophet Sallallahu answered, you say Allah's name on it. What should we infer from this? So you say, stop. We all believe in the Prophet Sallallahu We all want to follow the Prophet I want to know, based on this hadith, give me the majority, 99% of the Ummah, how they understood this hadith and how they explain it. What are the principles that they got from it? What are the rulings they got from it? And don't tell me, oh, it means you shouldn't ask if it's halal or haram. Because that's not how they understood it. Maybe the hadith means that. Maybe the Prophet Sallallahu would come and slap us all in the face and say, guys, chill out. It's halal. Eat it. Maybe. Who knows? We don't know. But l going with the roll of the dice, you got 99.99% of the ummah versus a few fatawa here and there that you can gather together and give a khutbah on. It's, it's not the same thing. So stick to what reflects 99% of the ummah and you'll be saved inshallah ta'ala. Go, go with the minority opinion, the fringe opinion, and as al Zai said, you're going to leave the deen itself. And so... Meat is halal until you can prove that it's haram. Is that is that a is that a system? Is that how the ulama say? No. So you're saying basically it's halal until you can prove that it's haram. That's that's a bit strange. You should believe anyone, even if they have no idea what halal or haram means, and even if there is no auditing body. So again, where I used to live, I'm not talking about any country, but where I used to live, I see a company bringing in meat from Brazil. And that same company bringing in fish from Brazil. And I know that there is no auditing body that audits halal meat into that country. And I know that that old company says on the, on the fish, it's called it's, it's Islamically slaughtered. Then I know that when they put the label on the beef, it means nothing. So now I'm going to buy it. I'd say, well, I bought it from a Muslim shop. Right? Is that is that reasonable? I don't know. And so again, when you explain the details of this to a mufti, the details, yeah, of course, that doesn't make any sense. But you take his fatwa and then you apply it randomly and then everything's halal. That It's not reasonable that it's halal. Right? And if there's no auditing body, then why are you even assuming it? If, if the statement means nothing, then why does it, what does it mean something? So there are countries in which there are auditing bodies. There are government bodies or other or independent bodies. And there are countries in which there are no auditing bodies. 
or this meat has no auditing body has has okayed it. It's possible that it's halal. Why not? But it's also, but is that a normal way that you function? Like, would you function like that with medicine? No, you wouldn't. And so remember this principle. We have the asl, the default, and we have the lahir, what is apparent. Yes, we're going to depart from what is the default, from what is apparent, but not to what is far-fetched. That doesn't make any sense. It's not even. It's not even what we're talking about. It's not even what we're even talking about. We're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, no, you should take this as standard even if it's possible it's error. Or it's strong and measurable indications. But if there's no indications, why not even assuming it to be halal? There's no reason for that at all. Or that the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the food of those were given the scripture before you is permissible. What, unconditionally? Meat from any country in which there are Muslim Christians, like not even majority, is halal regardless of how they slaughter. Right, so now we're we're taking a fringe opinion, and we're applying it in a way that it wasn't even given in. I say it's all halal, brother. Don't worry about it. Right? Is is that really re reflects what the ulama have said and what the Quran and Sunnah are saying? Or meat from any country in which there are some Jews or Christians is unconditionally halal. Forget it. Right. That that's not the discussion that that is in the minds, Allahu Alam, of these of these muftin, of these people giving the fatwa. And that's not what they mean. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has told us in the Quran, prohibit prohibited for you are is carrion, and blood, and the flesh of swine, and that which has been dedicated to other Allah, and those animals killed by strangling. So what if they strangled the animal, or a violent blow they hit an animal on the head, a bolt, for example. Or by a headlong fall, or by the goring of horns, or or or, or etc. So didn't Allah Subhanahu wa Taala right very clearly paint that for us that it has to be Islamically slaughtered, meaning the throat cut? How then does it suddenly become, you know, just okay for anything? And if that's the case, is that a real position or not? I'm not talking about specifics. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. What I'm saying is, let's follow a fatwa that reflects. The Torah that reflects the 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 the, the heritage, the Islamic academic heritage that we have, the legacy, and let's not follow a fatwa that is just given on the was given yesterday on the on the hot on the member by some imam, or by some twentieth twenty first century or twentieth century scholar. You want to look at something that reflects somebody said it and they agreed upon it. That's called that's how academics works. That's how scholarship works. Someone puts out an idea, right? That perhaps, for example, uh, the whole idea of uh, uh, that there is a constant called the speed of light. They put the idea out and people discuss it for a long time and then they come to a conclusion. But not that somebody says something and nobody agrees with them and then we just follow them. That doesn't make any sense. That's, not a, that's called following a fringe opinion. We don't do that. And so do we leave the default assumption of something being haram for the mere possibility of it being halal? Or for naivety? Like... You're just being naive. Like, that's not even realistic. Like, that's not that the actual picture. You know how that country works, and you're just making an assumption like that. That doesn't make any sense. Right? And so in Islam, we have something as pluralism, meaning there's more than one way of looking at something. Right? And so you want to follow any legal system, that's fine. Like, there's a fatwa that someone gave, and it was confirmed by so-and-so, and confirmed by so-and-so. Okay, this one, fine. But when it's like just one or two or three people here and there, and it's not... It didn't go through the process. Like, what is that? That's that. Is that part of pluralism or is that part of chaos? Right. And more importantly, when it comes to halal meat, is you can follow whatever you want. You can do whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Go ahead, enjoy the hamburger, but don't give it to other people. Give it to your kids. Give your kids something that you know is halal. I know this is halal. And this is not a fringe opinion. This is a this is a solid opinion that's reflected again and again and again. So don't take chances for other people. You can't do that. That's not fair for your kids, for other people. Uh, but brother, come and have some uh, meat. Is it halal? Of course, it's halal. Kullu halal, right? Everything's halal, right? It's like don't take chances for other people. Be aware of what's going on, right? This is like somebody who says, for example, I'm not going to do chemotherapy. I got cancer. I'm not going to do chemotherapy. I'm going to have lemon juice. Does chemotherapy help you? Like, really? I don't think it's f definitely the case. But does lemon juice help you? I mean, it might do. Some people apparently have cured themselves of cancer by just drinking lemon juice and nothing else. But 
could you have would you would you let your kid do drink do that would you have your kid like just drink lemon juice or would could, would could you do, do that as, or could you responsibly do that for other people's kids or other people's other other people make decisions like that for other people no because that's a fringe opinion so it's i'm not saying what is right and what is wrong but it's what is likely right what is likely Follow the majority, and you're doing something likely. Follow this minority, and you're doing something that's very scary. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi sallam. Subhanallah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa natu